Welcome to the Floor Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in sunny Mesa, Arizona. We're here to talk with flooring professionals from all across the country about the issues that truly matter to you. This week, our guests are Mike Atkins, Daniel Gonzalez, and John Fowler. Each one of these gentlemen recently competed in and won the Flooring Installer of the Year competition at Surfaces. They were kind enough to speak with me about their experience and why you should take a chance and send in an entry. Boy, we got a special one for everybody today. So, Daniel Gonzalez, are you on the line? I am. John Fowler, are you on the line? I'm here. Michael Adkins, are you on the line? I'm here, man. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. What's even more impressive is that we were able to throw this together in probably less than 12 hours with four guys that run their own business. So... I, I am absolutely amazed that uh, everyone had the availability and is not stuck on a job site, is not out on an estimate, has kids to deal with. Um, so thank you, everybody, for, for making this happen. I, I very much appreciate all of your times. No problem. Uh, let's start off. We're going to we're going to introduce I want everyone to introduce themselves, give themselves uh, just give a little bit about your background, maybe how you got started in flooring, how long you've been doing it any certifications you may have and we will go in that in that same order so daniel let's start with you all right daniel gonzalez preferred flooring i'm out of grand rapids michigan been doing flooring for 21 years i started actually when i was 12 years old as a one day temporary in the summertime ended up working every single break that i had from school up until i graduated then started full time never looked back I'm certified, I'm CFI certified in carpet, residential, and commercial one. I am NORA certified. I am Omnisport certified. What other certifications do I have? I am moisture testing certified. I'm Artex certified. And next week, I'll be an instructor for the NAFCT for the Flash COVID heat weld certification they got going on awesome that that is you take your education seriously i like that i do all right john fowler john fowler uh john fowler designs i'm in north florida i've uh, been doing it about 20 21 years i um i've had very uh unique situations from military i worked on aircraft and sheet metal to um working on fiberglass in high school, building boats. And it's given me a unique set of skills. And I kind of went into tile work uh, with the artisticness and uh, skills from other types of work it allowed me to, to kind of over, overcome a lot of obstacles that most guys face. And um, I love to be artistic. I love to uh, do what most people don't want to do. It kind of gives me a unique set of skills. And um as far as certifications, I don't have as many as some of the guys, but I am Sluter certified, and I'm also certified for up to five by ten foot porcelain, so I can do everything as far as tiles concerned. Okay, and Michael Atkins. Yeah, I'm Mike Atkins from uh, Eastern Shore, Maryland. I've been doing flooring for about 21, 22 years, about the same amount of time as these guys. Uh, I'm CFI certified. I've been I'm certified with the NFIC. I've uh, been to the Ceramic Tile Education Foundation. Been to Schluter, Armstrong. Um, I've a few certifications anyway. Uh, some of them are just certificates from you know schools I attended, like out there in the CTEF or whatever. But uh, other than that, been doing carpet 21 years, man. I love it. I do all types of flooring though carpet tile hardwood so okay awesome I, I i like seeing everybody get invested and, and taking education that they've been able to get from everywhere from when they were young to continuing into what they're doing now and using it to not only better their business but find ways to get you know 
creative solutions for your clients. So all three of you, congratulations. You are the winners from each of the categories that were at the installer of the year competition this year at Surfaces. And so there was tile, resilient, and carpet. So I want to know what that experience was like. Last year, I got to sit down and I, I talked with Ken Ballen and Alan Lewis, and they kind of went over it. This is the second year of the competition since they, they've brought it back. Uh, it's still all based on submissions. There's no regional competitions or anything yet. So what got you excited about wanting to do it, and why did you – enter a submission and we will start with john and we will work our way through daniel and to mike uh for me it was kind of an accident um in november i was with my guys in tampa doing a, a another sluter training getting those guys certified and uh i happened to be on tile geeks and was kind of surfing through there and i came across uh an advertisement for tise and I went on there and I saw they had the competition. So I was like, yeah, this is kind of cool. I've never really seen this before. And um, went on there and, and submitted a, uh, an essay and some of my pictures. And I thought it'd be cool. I was like, you know, hey, why not, you know, try it? I didn't know if I'd actually get picked or not. But uh, I actually submitted it and it didn't look like it went through because the, the Wi-Fi was pretty bad. And I figured, you know, what the heck, you know, whatever. And about four or five weeks later, I actually get an email. It went through and I was actually picked. So, you know, pretty excited at that point. Okay. You know, just a, an opportunity you don't normally get to have. Yeah. No, I mean, you're putting yourself out there when you, when you do that, you know, you're, you're taking a step above a lot of other guys that aren't doing anything. And so that says volumes about who you are as, as a person. So Daniel, how did, how did you hear about it? What got you excited about it? Why'd you even submit the essay and the, and the photos? So last year I actually seen everyone doing it and they didn't have a resilient this year. I did see the resilient now. And I actually talked to, excuse me, my sister who works for us. And I was like, you know, I'm thinking about entering it, but I don't know. Cause there's some great resilient guys out there. Right. And she told me that I would be dumb if I didn't enter it. So then I talked to my wife, like, I don't know. And she said that if I didn't enter it, she was going to enter it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got some, you know, some pictures together, wrote. Um, they do want to know quite a bit of information about the job, you know, what what went into it, what challenges you had, how'd you overcome them. So I got all that together and I actually found out <clears throat> a lot sooner than everyone else because I knew one of the judges. So right after they submitted everything he called me i was actually in the Artex certification and told me congratulations but keep it hush hush <laughs> of course i i won't even ask which judge i don't want to throw him under the bus but it's good to have friends that, that he wasn't is. one of my judges i'll tell you that okay and mike how did how'd you hear about it why'd you want to submit the the essay and the photos and go through this process so I seen it. Um, actually, I, I think I seen it on CFI's website uh, about the competition. And plus, then I checked it out last year when I heard your podcast with it with Ken and uh, I think Sonny, right? No, Alan. Alan. Okay, yeah. And um, and so that's how I found out about it. And then I went online, seeing you could submit photos. You know, write up an essay on it, and it's pretty much what I did. And I didn't think nothing of it. And then you know. They called. I didn't actually. I was like John. I didn't think it went through. So when okay. it did, it was you know. Um, and I think I found out like Thanksgiving Day or something. So yeah. cool. I mean, and that gives you some time to like prep mentally for it and stuff. So what what's yeah. that like? So you guys have been selected. You know, you're going to be on this stage. Um, maybe some of you had been to services before. Maybe not. I, I I'm not sure. But obviously, that's a it's a pretty big stage. There's a lot of people there. I was just there for my first time this year and I was blown away by the size of it. I couldn't believe it took 10 minutes to walk from one side to the other, you know, and, and it's filled with people the whole time. So how'd you mentally get prepared for going? Did you, did it make you nervous? Were you excited? Were you, you know, like, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, I was a little nervous about it. Um, you know, but like what made me want to go there was, you know, I knew that Jim Walker was one of the judges and I had met him like 20 years ago when I got certified and I thought that was cool that, you know, he was still a part of it and mm-hmm. still there. So get to hang out with him and, um, but yeah, to prepare for it, I was nervous. I can't say I wasn't, I didn't even think I was going to finish <laughs> that thing that day. So like even to finish up was, uh, was like a relief, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. It was challenging. Daniel? Uh, I think I was more nervous before I actually submitted the project than after I got accepted because after you get accepted, it's <laughs> I'm just going to go down there. They're going to throw something at me, and I'm going to do what I do every day. Okay. That's all you right. can do. <laughs> and John? Well, I was pretty much, um, you know, all of the above, I guess, a little bit here and there. You know, what kind of questions are they going to ask you as far as the, the test is concerned? So that's really was the thing I was most nervous about. And then uh, as far as doing the actual work, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, you know, I can do a good job. So, I, you know, I just do what I do every day and, you know, and, and be confident that, you know, I'm, I'm putting out a good product. So for me, it was a test. I didn't know what to expect, but, you know, it wasn't wasn't. Hold on, I, we're having some sound difficulties. I apologize. Give me go. Ahead. Somebody say something for me, real quick. Give me a little. <laughs> oh wait, give me a little more than uh, that. Something a little more than that. <laughs> All right, we're back. So I apologize. Okay, so you're nervous. You're happy. You're excited. There's a bunch going on. Um, and so. Yes, there there is the written test. We 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 heard about that last year from from Ken and Allen. So you you sit down to take this this written test, and some of you know some of you knew it was coming, some of you didn't. So how how does that make you feel? Because I know it's all basically industry specifications, things like that. It's all stuff that we should be on the up and up about. How did that go for you all? I think it went pretty well. Um... There was quite a bit of standards questions on there. So I've noticed that a lot of the guys don't actually take their time out to read the ASTM standards. Luckily, I have. So I was uh, <laughs> I was ahead of the curve. <laughs> um, it, my test got super indus- like super manufacturer specific, like yeah. Armstrong, Congolium, a manufacturer I've never even heard of before. <laughs> okay. So that that got a little little tough. I just started guessing. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. As long as the bubbles filled right. in, you did better than not filling it in. It was like three or four questions. I'm like, man, if I get these wrong, it's whatever. I got the other ones in the bag. Yeah. All right, John. What about for you? Well, you know, for me, it was um, you know a lot of it, you know safety and uh, standard questions and stuff like that. But then then you had some stuff that like. With 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 tile, like especially with your showers and stuff like that, different parts of the country kind of do things differently. So like you know that comes with a certification as well. Like they're real heavy in certification up in the north, in the Midwest and stuff. But like down in Florida, even in my area, I've talked to a lot of guys, and you just don't really hear about that down here a whole lot. So I went up there not being CFI certified, and felt like everybody was looking at me because like what are you doing here? You're not even certified. But um, you know, so you're going in there, you're trying to do these questions, and you're you know, it's based off of that kind of certification standards, but you're just not really sure what they're going to ask. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once I started, you know, going through the questions, uh, I started feeling more comfortable. There was a few things here and there that I, you know, I wasn't sure of. Um, but, you know, it, it's kind of specific to different types of things that you do. And because I do Sluter and stuff like that, you're not doing that kind of stuff every day. So it, it really depends on what you do on a daily basis. Yeah. Okay. Mike? Yeah, so for me, mine was carpet, so um, yeah, they were asking a lot of questions about wools and wovens and, you know, stuff like that. Industry, you know, the standards on that type of carpet, it seemed like, uh, more than any others, so, um, but yeah, some of them I knew, some of them, I ain't gonna lie, I mean, I was 
not sure of. <laughs> and they tricked me a little bit too, I think. So, you know. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because you know you can study all you want, but you don't know what they're gonna throw at you until you right. get there. You know, it looked exactly. like the tile was similar to last year, if not the same. Maybe they changed out some of the products that were used in the design a little bit, but it looked pretty similar. I know the carpet was different because last year there was like stairs and stuff, and this year there was just like the step, and it had the radius to it. And then with the resilient that was that was all new so you've taken the test you've gotten a night of rest you get to go in and and you're walking in there in the morning they hand you the work order now obviously that can be like any other day because you're just going to go somewhere and you're going to start a job and so you get to look over this work order in your mind what's the level of difficulty on the work order that you're given Um, for me, I, I, I thought it was going to be easy, but, uh, it ended up being like an Axminster carpet and, and that stuff did not even want to bend some ways. And, uh, it was tough to work with. It was a very tough piece of carpet to work with. So all the seams had to be cut from the back, follow the pattern from the back and seal and everything. So it was actually a little more challenging than I thought it was going to be way more challenging. I mean, after the first day, I didn't think I was going to finish, but the next day it kind of went went through pretty good and i don't know it just worked out okay john well i think for us uh we just got handed a drawing um you know we had to do everything from put the wallboard in put the shower floor and curb all that we had to waterproof everything and then tile everything and so i mean it was it was a tremendous amount of work i mean definitely more work than you would normally do in two days so we, you know, we had our tasks set out for us, but, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you know, it was just, you know, put your nose to the grindstone and just keep working and don't look up. And, you know, I, I, you know, I think all three of us, you know, that were in the tile, we all, you know, we, we hooked up that challenge and, and we all finished, but you know, it, it was difficult for sure. Yeah, no, I, I was very impressed with how far all of you got because I know last year they didn't get everything done. And so for you guys to have completed everything on that on that work order was very impressive. There was a lot to get done. So, Daniel, what about for you? Uh, first thing I noticed when I walked down there was there was no subfloor. <laughs> so it was kind of he knew how difficult it was, and he said, pay no mind to the subfloor. We're just looking at the workmanship. <laughs> And there, there was actually quite a people that came over there and started asking me about the subfloor and stuff, and I had to explain to them what was going on. But the, those designs and stuff, I'm, I was using tools that I've never even seen before to <laughs> cut out my designs. And it's like, you know, you, I, ma- I made it work, but you, typically I'm getting templates made for stuff like that, so it's super easy. Mm-hmm. But I had to cut everything by hand. I mean, it was it was a challenge. I actually yeah. didn't even know that we were going to be doing flash cope in there. I, this project I submitted was not a flash cope project. <laughs> so I, I mean, you had your work cut out for you. You had to pull from every ounce of your bag. And so let let let's talk about that. You don't bring your tools with you. Like maybe you bring a couple hand tools, but obviously they're flying you out. They're putting you up. So there's a bunch of tools that are donated. Um, I, I know the tile guys got the, each had an IQ saw of their own this year, which was pretty cool. So you didn't have to fight over that. Um, you were, uh, Daniel, you were obviously provided some tools, but I don't even know anything about resilient and, and putting sheet goods down. I, so I can't even touch that. And then, then for the carpet, kind of the same thing. So like what, you know, what's it like working with tools that, that aren't yours in this high pressure situation where you, where you're on display and you have to make it happen and they're not handing you like you know here's a nine by nine room and lay it in a rectangular pattern you know it's it's not an easy thing to do yeah it was a challenge yeah i asked them i said i had to ask for tools that they had to go hunt for i'm like (laughs) where's this tool at and you know i don't it was as simple as a straight edge i had to wait for a straight edge the first day i didn't get one till after lunch yeah. So wow. I was, I had to figure some other stuff to do for a half a day, till I got me a straight edge. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But after after that, anything that I asked for was pretty smooth sailing. They'd have it within, you know, 20 minutes or so. Sure is a good thing. There's a lot of tool manufacturers at Surfaces. Know, for sure. <laughs> what about for you, John? Uh, one of the things that hit me first, uh, I didn't have, I tried to bring some stuff with me, but I had no idea what to expect. Some of the tools were kind of archaic. And uh, you said something about the tile looking like last year, where ironically, they had somebody donate a tile right up until the last minute on Monday. They they backed out and they had to go find something at last minute. Oh, wow. So we were actually kind of short some of the, the tile that we actually needed for all three of us to finish and have everything. Um, and then, you know, the, the tools were kind of sparse and I needed a slide knife and actually ran down to the Sluter vendor and borrowed one from them because they were doing shows uh, or um, demonstrations. So I knew they would have one. So I borrowed one for a little while and took it back and you know we just kind of made things happen the best we could with what we have and i guess that's part of the competition you know it's high stress with a lot of people watching and you know you just got to use what you have to make it work like using a piece of cardboard to to run water out of a sink into a bucket you know it's that we didn't have a garden hose we just mm -hmm. did what we could yeah what about for you mike um yeah so <clears throat> most of the tools that were provided for the carpet you know cool glide stuff like that I, I use anyway and uh i brought like some row cutters and and stuff like that but i ended up like i said the carpet had to cut by hand because you know you really didn't run rows in that you cut it from the back and um just kind of let your knife stay in between the rows um so but we ended up having problems with the cool glide the one i had like com like was burning the carpet and stuff i guess it was an electrical problem um they ended up getting that fixed and sorted out and so I ended up doing some seams, you know, with just the regular iron. Um, but yeah, it was a challenge. And then all the people there watching you every time you look up, it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was crazy. <laughs> well, and I, I forget which one of you said it, but I, I think John, you know, that I, the resourcefulness for you to be able to run off and get tools and kind of get them fixed and know that there's other boosts there and vendors and things like yeah. that. And that you can, Hey, I'm in the competition. Let me get this real quick and I'll bring it back later. You know, I, 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 I can, you know, that's, that's good resourcefulness and it shows who you are as a, as a business owner and why you're able to be in this position and succeeding. You know, you're thinking outside the box. You're not letting something simple set you back. Mm. So that's, that's awesome for all of you that you're able to, you know, realize there's a slight deficiency, but you're not going to let it ruin your day. You're finding a way around that. Um, and Mike, you just mentioned that, you know, you turn around because you're, you, you get in the zone, obviously you're working and, and you're focused on what you're doing, but then you turn around and from what I know, Ken and Alan were saying, there was way more people watching this year. You, it, that little stage was, it was not filled more often than not with people. Yeah. At least a hundred people or more. Had a few times. There was people on there, and I was like, yeah. I look back one time, and I had a guy videotaping me working, and he must have been there for 20 to 30 minutes or more just watching me and videotaping the whole time. So not only are you being watched, you're being taped at the same time, and it's pretty crazy. Yeah, for a majority of the, like, in the beginning – I did have a lot of people coming up and asking me questions because you don't get to see resilient installed like that. Mm -hmm. it, it's rare because you know it's a specialty item, so you you get some people that are interested, and I tried to answer the questions because, I mean, it's in my nature. I like I like to give people information, and then I got yelled at for answering so many questions. <laughs> you gotta work. <laughs> You're there to work. Well, and so all, all these eyes are on you and not only are the judges eyes on you and, and watching you the whole time and they walk by with their clipboards and they're making their notes. So can you hear, are you paying attention to what the, the viewers are saying? Is that getting inside your head? Like when you hear them saying, oh, I, I wonder why you set that tile like that way or why does his layout look <laughs> like that? Yeah, I'm sure people were saying that. I paid no attention to it really. <laughs> I put my AirPods in and just turn the music up, you know, just to fo you know focus on what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Daniel, I you were him. just you you were just happy to talk, huh? I was I was talking, man. <laughs> you got questions, I'm there to answer them. 
there was more installers there than I thought there would be too. Like, so you never knew if it was like an, an installer up there, you know, mm-hmm. judging what you're doing, whatever, right. you know, so there's that pressure also. There was a, quite a few resilient installers that had questions. So I tried to answer those. I mean, it's uh, what I'm calling is, is a lost art. I'm, not many people do it. Us that do do it well are rare. So if I can spread any of my knowledge to anyone to for them to push out the best installation, that's what I want to do. That's that's what it's all about. We got to pass these arts on instead of keeping them to ourselves. And, <clears throat> you know, there, there's always been guys that are like, no, I'm not going to give away my info. My apprentice just needs to, like, learn on his own and he'll figure it out. But if if we're not trying to actively pass these things on and share the information we're only hurting ourselves because you're going to kill an industry so well and we're short of craftsmen now we need we we need good craftsmen you know there's a there's carpet guys and tile guys and stuff out there all over the place that their their work is just quick and easy money and they don't really care about what it looks like and you know people actually care more about the job than than just the money you know, it, it, that's a dying art that, that people don't care about craftsmanship. And I think that's what's really getting lost. See, everybody's been pushing this this mindset to where you're just a subcontractor. No, I'm not a subcontractor. I'm a craftsman. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's a that's a really good segue here. So what is it that you would like this installer of the year competition to turn into? How do you want to see it help the industry? Because like you said, we 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 should be craftsmen and, and we should be pushing the limits of what we're able to do within our craft and, and handing that down to somebody and making sure that they have as much respect for it as we do. So, I mean, I, I think that uh, it, it brings awareness to the trade, you know, that it gives you, I mean, it's kind of cool to go and, and, and challenge yourself and something like this. And then, you know, it's a good opportunity for, maybe younger people to want to come and do it, you know, um, things like that. Okay. I'm right there, man. I'd like to see some younger people there. I mean, you look at all of us and I mean, we're, we're not too young anymore. (laughs) We're getting up there. (laughs) Yeah. But man, if we could see some young people there, um, that, that would be awesome talk to Raul and he's trying to say that there needs to be a huge grand prize <laughs> at the end of everything, but it's still growing right now. We got some time. Yeah. yeah. All right. And John. Well, I thought it was exciting. There was, there was a young guy there that was with um, his boss had brought him and a couple other guys there. And uh, my, my wife was there the whole time. And she told me that somebody was calling me the pizza guy. And I was just like, I didn't really understand what she was talking about, but I have a way of flipping my tile in my hand like a pizza when I when I back butter it. And I actually got to meet him at the end. He came up to me and he was so excited. You know, he he's newer and he was there with his, with his boss, but he was like, yeah, man, I was calling you the pizza guy. And, you know, just to see that excitement on somebody's face that you're, like, you're, you're, you're doing something with a very skillful craftsmanship kind of way. And it's inspiring, you know, these younger guys to to want to be better and to to do well. And and I think that that's what some of these industry is is losing. That we've got to figure out a way to to bring that back and make you know the younger people more excited about it and and not just want to make the money, but also want to do beautiful work. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's and I think that's exactly what what CFI is after with with this is they're trying to bring recognition back to it being a skilled trade and it's it's not a commodity because a lot of people look at all this stuff as a commodity these days you know you can go on craigslist and find somebody to put in tile or laminate carpet just about almost any surface but when you have somebody doing it as a commodity you don't necessarily get a great end product as we all know whereas if you pay a little bit more you get somebody that's going to put it in with a passion they're going to follow the directions. They're going to do it right. And they might be able to do something that's going to wow you at the end of the day. And so to put you guys on display and, you know, yes, it's nerve wracking. It's, you know, everyone's looking at you, but you're there to show off your skills. You're there to bring awareness to the fact that 
there is a higher level of doing this and that we can try and get that out there. And so, uh, Daniel, you said you, somebody was saying that there needs to be a bigger price pool. So each one of you got a $500 check, which is cool. I mean, like, okay, they flew you out there. They put you up, you competed, you got into surfaces for free. You might've had a little bit of time on the third day to finally roam around and, and you won and walked away with 500 bucks. So could there be more money? Sure. But I think that's on us as installers to continue to push this and, and get that out there that, hey, there is this competition and go talk to your your local vendors and stuff and say, hey, there's this competition. I really think you should you should talk to CFI and see if there's not some way you can help. You know, you could donate product or add to the prize pool or, you know, that's we have to promote it just as much as them. We can't leave it to just whoever is holding the competition. We've got to talk it up as, as much as they are, if not more. Yeah, absolutely. There was um, one of the uh, two manufacturers actually came to congratulate me afterwards, and they actually said that they didn't know what was going on until they were there, and everything was pretty much over. And I said, man, you guys got to get into this. You paying just to have your name as a big backdrop if they have Resilient again would, you know, it'll pay you back Mm -hmm. real quick. Oh, yeah. No, there's a ton of publicity with it. You know, there's how many eyes on it. You're going to get the pre stuff that's going to be in magazines and through Facebook and the, all the different groups okay. and stuff. There's Let's see how many pictures were floating around already. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. So where did everyone feel they were? Because obviously you guys are the winners, but there was it's not an easy competition. I mean, you're, you're up against guys that are really good. So where did you each feel you were going into Thursday morning? For me, it was like, um, I, I still didn't think I was going to get quite finished or whatever. Cause I still had a border and, you know, stretch it all in. I had to wrap the nose on the landing for the carpet and all which took some time because it did not want to go around that radius real well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I didn't think I was going to finish and then ended up like, you know, at the end wrapping it all up and it just worked out, you know, but day one, I didn't think I was going to finish, but I thought what I was doing looked pretty, looked okay, you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, you're it was taking when, a lot of time to do it <laughs> when you're looking at the other two pods and uh-huh. and you're looking at everybody's work. Were you like, oh, I got this in the bag or were you like, oh, man, like, I don't know, like I screwed that up and that up and that up and, and they've got all that right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I felt like I did a great job. I feel like I did the best I could do. Um, you know, I didn't really want to compare myself to everyone else. I know everyone worked hard on it, you know, mm-hmm. so. I figured it was, you know, could be anyone's game, really. So, um, like I said, I just did the best I could do, and, you know, I really didn't know, so. Okay. Daniel? Yeah, I mean, if you've heard what happened with me, it was almost kind of say I won by default, right? But... Yeah, they brought Mike in. He's a CFI guy. He actually his installation looked amazing. Um, his oh, oval yeah, yeah. was so much better than mine that I actually contacted him afterwards and I said, "I need you to tell me how you did that." <laughs> like, <laughs> it was great, man. Um, I did feel really good, but any product I I usually put out, that's how I feel about it. So I wouldn't have left left it if I didn't feel that way about it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay, John. Well, you know, for me, um, I'm kind of I'm kind of slow and deliberate with my work, so I, I'm I'm never I, I pretty much when I finish a job, I finish a job. I never set anything on dates, and so right out of the gate, they kind of they kind of went away from me, and I kind of was lagging behind the the whole time. Uh, it wasn't until right at the end during grout that I actually kind of got to the you know, as far as completion, the second position as far as completion. Uh, But, you know, I just, I just, for me, it was whatever I get done, I want to do it 
the best I can for the situation that we're in. And it wasn't really about, let me just get it done. I just wanted to do the best for every part of it. Cause we were graded on everything from putting the dirt rock in to putting the waterproofing in, putting the tile in, how we measured, like there was so many parts. So it, you couldn't just look at it as like, Oh, he's ahead of me, but it doesn't matter because they're grading every part of it, not just where you're at. So as long as everybody finished, it's really based off of all the scoring that they were doing throughout your installation. So I just I was confident that I was I was trying to do the best job that I could, hoping that that would be you know enough to give me the points to win. Mm-hmm. And not even not even worried about anyone else. Just do my own thing, play my game, and go from there. Exactly. I don't know how your guys' was yeah. laid out on the paper, but they were like measuring mine, and they would measure my cap, and it was falling off because I didn't have the right stuff. <laughs> and they were like, oh, don't worry about that. But then the next day they were like, oh, go measure that again. I'm like, come on, man. You said don't worry about it, and now you're over here measuring it again. And they they measured mine like five times, man. Yeah, so, yeah. and then they're they're like taking measurements, and they're like, oop, this is a uh, – this is almost a 16th off, so... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> almost the 16th. Come on, man. Almost the 16th. <laughs> well, they were measuring our outside perimeter on our floor. And at the time, I, in my mind, it was like, well, yes, I know by the TCNA, we're supposed to have a gap on our baseboard, you know, around that, that expansion gap. But looking at it from the point of view of trying to get the design and everything for the competition... I really wasn't thinking in terms of, oh, you got to have a gap all the way around. So, like, that was probably a few points I, I lost because I really wasn't thinking that. But then I looked around at the other guys, and they didn't have that gap either. So I was like, well, we all got that wrong. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. you know, worry about something else now. <laughs> worry about something else. Yep. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, you know, th- there's a lot going on during it, it looks like. You know, not that there's not a lot going on during a normal project, but you get a little bit more time. Like, the one I'm on right now, I'm – wrapped up day seven of 10. So I've got another three days to go and I just have to go in and every day there's a little goal and you get to work towards it. And with that, it looks like you guys basically get handed a sheet of paper and told, you know, obviously do the best you can, but if you don't make it far enough, you're mi- you're going to miss a ton of points. And so you have to kind of, it, it seems like you're battling a system between doing Getting a great job, but trying to get finished so that you can accumulate as many points as possible. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I um, yeah, that's how I felt the whole time. Like, I I wanted to get it done, you know, to finish the project, but uh, I wanted to get it done right, so it was taking much longer than I thought. And the and the booth was kind of, you know, you look at it and you're thinking, man, I I got this, but at the end of day one, man, it was like, like I said, it was a lot, you know, mm-hmm. a lot more than I expected. I mean, I thought it would be, you know, a little simpler, but because he didn't even have the step for me in the carpet. You know, we just had the, the landing. But I think the carpet was pretty tough to, to work with and get it to fold over the nose and, like I said, all that stuff. It was a double set on the top mm-hmm. and stretch on the bottom with a six-inch border. So That that wasn't a six-inch border because it came pre-cut and, and it, it was off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was all kinds of fun stuff like, going on. It looked like six inches, man, you know? <laughs> Close now, enough. I know yeah, so, you, couldn't so, tell. you couldn't tell somebody's <laughs> somebody's wall came falling down when they were stretching in. Was that your wall, Mike? No, no. OK, <laughs> that was my neighbor's uh, wall. <laughs> OK, well, apparently we'll throw them under the bus. Uh, the uh, union tradesmen in, in Vegas aren't that great because the, the wall came tumbling down when they were stretching <laughs> carpet. Yeah. Oh, um, that carpet's tricky. It's tricky. It only stretches like one way, you know. Okay. So I don't know which way he was stretching when he did that. But... <laughs> um, man. So, would you do it again? No, Absolutely. I would not. Only because I missed the entire thing, man. I didn't get to visit. I. The, I got to go to one booth, and w- once I got there on Thursday morning, I got a phone call from where you at. You got pictures. It's like, man, you guys told me I had to like nine thirty. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. I don't know if I would do it again. I mean, I, I can't say I wouldn't do it again, but you know. Okay. You know, I would like to see more of the show. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know. Um, 
But yeah, I can't say I would not do it again. I maybe would. <laughs> John, <laughs> see you next year, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I'd love to do it again. I think it was a, it was a very unique uh, experience. And uh, then again, you know, it, it's, it's kind of something you, you want to get, you want to see everybody get an opportunity to, to, you know, to win that award and compete. Yeah. And you know, maybe if ever, if we kept coming back, if we were lucky enough to to win every time you know and did that good job well then you're kind of keeping other people from experiencing that so mm -hmm. you know you don't want to necessarily look at it in a greedy way of always thinking you know i got to keep going back and winning a whole bunch of times you know give other people a chance as well okay well so there used to be regional competitions in order to qualify for the national competition so that, from what i can tell is we just need to keep promoting it and then you're going to be able to compete regionally and then the winners from that will go and be able to compete at surfaces. So more people can get involved, more people can see it and we can start promoting it on a larger level just within our, our more regional areas, you know, so the Southwest might get broken up into one and you know, they'll, you they'll kind of break up the stallers. States. Uh -huh. <laughs> you got to find some more stallers. That's, that's on us in that's my opinion. That, well, if if it does get to that point and we do have to start competing to actually get into the full on competition, then I'll consider it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so right, right now we're actually trying to talk uh, my sister into competing next year if they have a resilient. I, I think that would be awesome is I would, you know, so Michelle Blomquist started the, the tile chicks group. I would love to see some of them trying to get involved and, and showing up and taking names at it and and putting us men to shame because it, it is a male dominated industry but that doesn't mean we're the best at it you know there's there's always somebody better than you and so i would i would love to see some women come in and, and get recognition and help show that you don't have to be a man in this industry you can it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman you can come in and you can do a great job so tell her i i, I say sign up i already told her that she needs to sign up she says, let her get through the certification that we got going next week first, and then she'll decide. <laughs> Just have to bug CFI and tell them to do another resilient. They were. I actually talked to uh, the guys that run it, and they said that they're actually shying away from it just because of what happened with the competitor dropping out that mm -hmm. day and then another one dropping out before uh, they even got down there. They're kind of weary of it, but if we get – I think if I can prove to them that we can get a couple of people to sign up right away, mm -hmm. why not? Yeah, I'd, I would agree. Well, I, so what is, you're all installer of the year in a category. What does that mean to you? What does that do for your business? How can you use this as, as bragging rights or as a, a way to push your business forward? I already put a, a page on my website, and I don't know if the other two have seen it, but I actually linked your guys' Facebook page right up on my website to give you guys some publicity, too, because you guys did an awesome job, man. Um, Thanks, man. I, yeah, thank you, you know, right when you log on, right when you go to my website, it pops up, installer of the year, click on a button, go to the page, read all about it. Um, we got the, the local chamber involved, so they're pushing it for us. Um, some of the distributors around town had me stop by with a trophy and take some pictures. Um, it's really opened the doors to especially tool manufacturers that want to have their name associated with Installer of the Year. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to partner up with them to see how we can help each other. You push me, I'll push you, partner up type thing. Yeah. So you've been able to take it already and you're, you're, I mean, you should use it to your advantage. You should use it to promote your, your business and, and get a step forward. But you've, you know, you're not letting it sit there. You're definitely, you've, you've already been able to take it and, and turn it into something and you're not going to let it just sit there and say like, yeah, I did it. Yay. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm running with it while it's hot, man. While it's on everyone's <laughs> mind get it in everyone's ears so that way they don't forget about me in a couple months <laughs> yeah what about you mike yeah i mean 
I mean, I came home, I put it on Facebook, put pictures up and stuff like that. Um, I, I mean, other than that, not much. Um, so, yeah. Got to get on it, man. It's a tool yeah. just like a certification. You got you got yeah, one I mean, year. You know, I mean, I put it on Facebook, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, everybody around knows. I mean, I live in a small town, so there's you know there's not a lot of people around here. Okay, already doing flooring. You know what I mean. So, um, but yeah, you know, I put it on Facebook and put it on my business page and all that, and you know, people seen it, so mm -hmm. I put it out there. How about for you, John? Uh, well, you know, for me, I've, I've got I've got several people that are that are trying to push it. I've I've got one friend that, um, yeah, he contacted local news and and told them about it, and, and which kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. I haven't been contacted yet, but you know, we've kind of had a few um, bad contractor stories around here lately, and and he was like, y'all need to y'all need to do a good contractor story, mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm still waiting to hear about that. But you know, Facebook yeah. like that that post. Uh, well, went well over a thousand hits, like immediately. Where it usually takes a while to to get up to four or five hundred, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on some good posts. But that one, like within a day and a half, two days, was well over a thousand hits on my Facebook page. And um, you know, I plan on doing some wraps on, you know, with my trailer and and you know, changing some of the stuff on my you know shirts and stuff like that. To, you know, kind of showcase that. But it wasn't yeah. sure exactly. Um, you know, I've ne never been in this situation before, so it's kind of a, a new thing to me on how to how to showcase that. But it definitely gives you, um, you know, some validity that you know uh, it's kind of hard to hard to really prove with just a certification or something like that. It, it's just a, a different level of validity, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have you said you had a crew. You got a couple guys working with you, John. I have one guy one uh, actually, and you know I do kitchen and bath and full house remodels. I don't do just tiles. So uh, I brought on this guy. He's, he's 19 and, and he's really excited about learning how to be a craftsman. And we sat down and talked for a long time. You know, it's like, I'm not looking to just have you come in here and learn how to sling, but I, I want somebody who's going to come in and learn how to be a craftsman and, and, and bring the team to a higher level. And, you know, if you're not interested in that, then I don't, I don't want you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's, he's real excited. And, you know, it's going to take him a long time to learn, but he didn't know anything. So he also doesn't have any bad habits to reteach him. And um, so, you know, it's one step at a time. And, you know, he's real excited about, you know, the, the show. And, you know, if I do go again, I'm going to take him. And, um, you know, once again, you know, passing it forward to, you know, the younger guys to get new, you know, younger guys excited about craftsmanship, not just turning it for some money. So yeah. what what was his reaction to it? So now you you went from like, you know, Joe Schmo boss to, hey, my, yeah. now now this this guy's like the top of the world right now. So what was his reaction to it? Well, well you know, uniquely, he he worked in a, a, a tile distributor. So he knew a lot of guys, and so he kind of he heard the backroom talk at the distributor about what guys were good, what guys weren't, you know, what kind of mess ups that the other guys were doing or or not doing, and and so when he came to work with me, he kind of had an idea of, you know, what you know, kind of what good work should be, you know, he didn't necessarily know technically, but so coming to work with me, he's he's, you know, had the opportunity to start seeing how I do things. And now he, even though he's not laying tile yet, he can go out in public and he can see where people have done bad jobs. He's like, man, you wouldn't believe what I saw last night. You know, you, you know, I can't believe somebody's getting paid for this. And, you know, so it really gets him fired up to do, you know, a good job, not just an adequate job. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, what's important that, you know, technically and trying to be as, uh, you know, do it with craftsmanship are two different things. And so he's, he was excited. I mean, he was just, um, going berserk over it. Actually, he's probably more excited than I expected. <laughs> Very cool, M Michael. You got you guys. You got guys, a cruise. What do, what do you got so going on? I, I got one guy that works for me. Um, I I used to have like a couple vans and do all that before like the recession back in like two thousand and eight and all. And then uh, when I got back into flooring, man, I just you know one van, one guy. We do what we you know fill our week up like that and i seem to do okay doing that and i'm pretty stay pretty busy doing that mm -hmm. you know and um it's less headache for me man i can just you know i get it 
Yeah. So, I get it. What what what's his reaction it's a lot now that than a bunch of guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if what what's his that. reaction now that boss is installer of the year? Oh, uh, yeah. He, he's he totally cool with it, man. I mean, he he's worked with me. So my helper uh, has worked with me a long time, and uh, probably like nineteen years. He's been in the flooring too, so he's not totally green. Um, so he he knows what he's doing a little bit, and yeah, he thought it was cool, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Daniel, for you, your your wife was there. Um, My, your your brother was there, or two brothers were there, right? Like, so you, the family was there and kind of saw what was going down the whole time. But yeah, me and my brothers are partners in the business. We've got right now uh, four employees looking for more because it's about that time. <laughs> um, my brother's full time in the office right now, but he's actually coming back in the field next week since I got to be gone for that certification. Okay. But it it's a it's fun. It's a struggle sometimes. Yeah. But they they were when I got back, they were all a big family over there, so they cracked jokes, Mr. Installer of the Year. <laughs> I can't walk in anywhere without them announcing me as installer <laughs> of the year. Same. Um, yeah. And then they you know, they were really excited, but at the same time, they said, we knew you were going to win as soon as you signed up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Yeah. They, they got to take you down a peg or two. You can't, you can't live Sometimes, up there. Like... <laughs> no, that's awesome. You know, it sounds like all you guys have really good head on your heads on your shoulders. You know, you're, you're looking at it from the right perspective. You're wanting to promote the industry. You're, you're wanting to use it to, you know, you know, you can help. You, it, it can promote your business, but you're also wanting to use it to continue to promote the industry and that it's a trade and that there's, it's a skilled art form and, and things like that. And so I find it really impressive that, you know, no one's looking at it from a very selfish standpoint. And I, I, I appreciate that from everyone. And that those are good values that are continuing to be passed on as these younger guys are, are coming in and learning from, from us, you know. There's there's a lot of talk that, like I said earlier, you know that the old guys don't want to share how the, how they do it, and you get these guys that are you know they they get six months experience, a year experience, two years experience, and and out the door they go, and they're they're on their own, and I've been doing it this way thirty years yeah. now, and that's the way I'm gonna do it, and I won't lie, man, I'm the guy with two years experience that ran out on his own, and I knew that's what I was gonna do from the beginning, but while i uh, while i was still learning i was looking for other ways to learn and i i haven't stopped you know i man i'll sit down and talk carpet with with somebody all day long or tile or, and i don't even know what you're ta- telling me about but i don't care i just want to know i just i i just want to hear about it so that if i see it i can understand it and the more i know then the more knowledgeable i am the more valuable i am and that's going to take me places definitely yeah. So, <clears throat> gotta start somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, that you do. Um, and I, I always hashtag never stop learning because man, you can learn something new every single day, even if it's something small. Take it with you. There, that's, right. that's it. That's you got to learn while you earn. That's what we do on this podcast. That's why it exists. That's why we hit the time limit we hit. You, everyone's got tons of time on their knees while they're installing these floors. Put in those earbuds and have at it man there's no reason that you can't go get a business podcast downloaded a marketing podcast an audible book on financing or finances or something like that i don't care what you put in your ears but you got eight to ten hours a day to fill fill it with something besides the same music you've been listening to for 20 years yeah so going touching back on your when you were talking about uh like the guys i've been doing it for years i've always experienced that and you know they don't want to share I've always done it this way and it really wasn't until I started doing certifications and then like going to CFI where you see the older guys, like, let me show you an easier way to do that. Or even, even them, they're like, how did you just do that? Can you explain it to me? Mm -hmm. Because I've never seen it done that way before. Mm -hmm. Like they're seeing them retaining the knowledge that you're giving them the same time that you're learning from them. It's, it's great, man. I love it. Yeah, no, it goes. It definitely goes both ways. And even being able to meet those guys, um, 
man, I couldn't even name them all, but just all the CFI guys that were around over there, they're, they're legends, you know, they, they know their stuff, they know what they're doing and you could pick their brain all day long, but there is the off chance that you're going to do something. They're going to look at you and be like, wow, okay, that's really smart. Like, how do you do that? And why do you do it that way? And then they can take that and start showing other people. So what do you guys, give me, give me one thing here. What, what do you want to see the industry become? What, what are you going to do to help change the industry in, in your area and, and further promote it and get us out of this installation or like installer crisis and that young people don't want to work? Like, what are you, what are you going to do to leave a little mark on the industry? I'm I'm kind of the opposite way with that right now cuz I'm a millennial, right? And they say that we don't want to work. But <laughs> but then you see like uh the Gen Z that's coming out and I always say man they're they're so smart because they were born with anything they wanted to know at their fingertips. So you can't keep on having the 1099 culture that's in the industry right now and expecting them to be okay paying their own taxes when they're supposed to be considered an employee, um, they, you have kids out there that would rather take a job for, you know, 14, $15 an hour with full benefits just to have that peace of mind than to work for $20 an hour on a 1099. Um, they, they know what's going on as far as the laws and everything now. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's real important that you kind of, research that yourself and then start putting process into place so that way when it does come down to it you're covered because there's drywall people over here that once they catch you man they give you a year to comply with everything or else you got to shut your doors yeah i mean I, i would like to see people get more involved with you know being certified and stuff like that um it would, you know, get more educated, find young people that want to get in it and, you know, learn CFI and CTI, Fermital, whatever it might be, you know, mm-hmm. get educated, man. And, uh, you know, make good money to do it. You know, the people, young people need to realize there's good money in flying. You just got to, you know, do a good job and want to do it right, you know. Mm-hmm. I think people focus too long, you know, we've got almost two full generations where they were, everybody was saying, you got to go to college, you got to go to college. And, yeah. and it's like, well, no, you don't have to go to college. It's very easy to make just as much or more money in a trade if you're good at it than, you know, going to college and having to pay back all that college. And, you know, you're, you're starting your career off. Okay. Well, you, you can start off making more money with an education and certain jobs but then you have all that debt or you can take the time to learn a trade and, and learn how to do it well. And you kind of, either way you look at it, there's that little bit of time where you got to, you got to get through that before you're, you're making a good living. And, you know, somehow we've got to come, you know, to a place where, you know, we were what maybe 20 years ago where they're actually pushing the trades. And, you know, I think we're starting to see that happen, but I don't think we're focusing enough on it. And, mm-hmm. you know, the longer that we wait as, a, you know, as these industries to, to really focus on that and get the young people into it, you know, we're going to have a huge gap there of people that aren't as skilled, you know, and, and it's, it's not good for the, for the industry. No, it's not. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Daniel, you're, you're right. I'm technically like I am the, the spitting image of a millennial because I turned 18 in 2000. So, um, yeah, people don't think we want to work. I think it's funny that everyone keeps talking about millennials in the news, but I think they're confused and they're referring to Gen Z a lot and, and they don't realize that there's, there's been that shift. Um, and then you have the fact that like you brought up the point that they have this instant access to information. They've grown up in such a world where, you know, they can pick up their phone and they can learn anything they want. But I've also seen it to where they take it for granted and they, they don't even use it. You know, they, they need to solve a problem and they don't know how because they've always been taught to the test 
instead of how to think for themselves. And there's a mindset that you need. We, we need to help change about them, but th- there is a cultural difference in how they, yeah, they do want to go and make sure that they, you know, have money and they get the benefits and they're not having to worry about things. And so there's a little bit of a down. shift and yeah. And I, I <laughs> we, you know, Mike, you said that you wanted to make sure that people were getting educated and, and stuff like that. And I think that starts with us. You know, when you yeah. when you get that kid to come to your house, when you sign them up to be your apprentice and th- there there's something, let's stop calling them helpers. OK, give them some respect. Give them something to aim for. Let's call them apprentices. This is going to be one of my new big pushes. OK, we got to stop calling them something that they can't aspire to do anything greater in. Let's call them an apprentice, give them something that they know they're working towards. They have bigger goals. They're going to do something. But then when they're in that truck with us and they're riding to work, we need to set the example of what furthering our education is. You know, let's let's turn on that podcast. Let's turn on that audible. Let's get them to I just talked with um, a buddy of mine and his boss would pay him one hundred dollars a book he read. And the boss would read the same book, and when he got done, they would discuss it. Didn't matter what the book was, as long as it was some kind of educational content, whether it was financial or business management or whatever it was, you know. So let's come up with incentives. Let's teach them that they need to continue to learn, and we can we can push that agenda forward and, and finally make that happen. And then John, you were saying, um, you know, we need to. Uh, what were you saying? I had somewhere to go and now my mind went blank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, them, them young people got to want that money though. You know, they got to want it. Want it to that, you know? Yeah. Some people just want a job and you know, I guess there's some people that just want to work and some people that, you know, want to work for themselves. I don't there, know. Well, and there are worker bees and we need them. Like, don't get yeah. me wrong. Not everybody should be an entrepreneur and a lot of entrepreneurs that are right now should probably go work for somebody because they don't understand the finer points of a business and stuff. Um, so, oh, that John, you were pushing, you were talking about the college agenda and stuff and, and how trades aren't pushed in schools. And I, I feel the trades really started leaving after I went through high school. Like I had wood shop and that's where I learned how to use all the tools and stuff so that I could do what I'm doing now. But I went yeah. to college, I went to film school and I went to a for-profit school. And so I was able to, the accreditation means nothing. If I took my degree anywhere, they would laugh me out of the building and I could get a D and get a degree and that was our saying around the around college was d's for degrees and that's like <laughs> you know it, it it means nothing man and i did film for a few years it was a blast but now here i am I, i've learned a trade and i'm making just as good if not better money because i'm running the company but i do have all that debt and i i need to tackle that and get it done and, and dealt with but what would have happened had somebody, you know, when I was younger and really enjoyed wood shop and stuff, had I had I been able to meet somebody that was like, look, you know, this is you have options over here and you could do stuff like this all the time instead of being told from all the teachers, oh, computers are the wave of the future. You got to go to school. You got to become an engineer of some kind. And that's where all the money is. And now how many people have all these degrees and their baristas down at Starbucks? Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, that's true. So it, it, it's, it's on us, in my opinion. It, it starts with us. You know, it's great that the WFCA has an initiative coming out to try and promote installers. It's great what CFI is doing with the competition to kind of raise awareness. Yeah. But to, to me, we need to go out. We need to do our due diligence every day by doing quality work and finding those guys and saying, look, you can do something with this. In a couple of years, if you want... Not only can you make great money by working for me, but if you put your head, if you wrap your head around it and, and you understand it, you can go out on your own and, and you can build your own show and your own machine that's going to be able to generate you income and, and you can be successful in life. You don't have to, you know, just be this grunt all the time. You're all speechless. Man, I'm amazing. You're speechless, man. <laughs> I'm kind of amazed that no. I haven't seen you taking any notes and you're just like spewing this off the top of your head after just listening to us and you're like, you talked about this, you talked about this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm glad yeah. you can do that. <laughs> uh, that's not the first time someone's noticed that. Um, we When we I recorded the one in uh, Forney, Texas after this my CFI certification, 
James Solace was like, I don't know how you come up with all these questions off the top of your head. Seriously, I thought you were going to be writing stuff down. I almost I have my iPad up here in case I had to start typing. <laughs> no, I'm really lucky. I'm I'm an auditory learner, and so I can kind of. I used to get in trouble in school because I'd be doodling, and uh, the teachers would be like, "Kyle, you're not paying attention." I'd ramble off like the last five minutes of everything they'd say, and I'd get kicked out of class because I was being the wise butt. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me. I told you. So no, it it, it just so happened. You know, like I said. Th- I've said it like there was a there was a part in this industry that needed to be filled because when I went looking for it, it didn't exist. And I happened to know how the equipment worked. And it, it turns out I can ramble on and on and on about stuff that apparently people are, are interested in. Why anyone listens to me? I have no idea. But thank you. And thank you guys for participating. You know, that's I, I find that even more amazing is that you guys are willing to come on and talk shop with me and who am i you know i was just some guy that said i'm gonna do this and everyone was like yeah i'll do that too so <laughs> i, I, I only agreed to do it because you gave me a sticker <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i feel jet because i didn't get a sticker <laughs> me neither well it's in the mail i can mail you a sticker but here's the problem <laughs> is is now i only have stickers for the homeowner version because i rebranded from floor education pro to floor academy and I don't have any stickers for Floor Academy yet. I probably won't for a while because I just dropped like 250 bucks on the other stickers. <laughs> so I, I, I'm kind of an idiot, but um, we'll get some new stuff made up. I got to come up with a new logo. So things are going to start changing here. But um, once hey, again, man, I'm I, glad to see people like you out there, you know, doing this. You know, somebody's got to spread the word. So. That's, yeah. no I, I appreciate that all i can ask is that you go out and you just you know tell the other installers in your area that this exists and let's we, we all got to work to bring up this industry you know it's going to be a grassroots movement sadly like i've been promoting this on facebook for months and i get like 200 listens a week and so it's going to come down to here this exists go listen to this up your game yes. you can change who you are but a lot of great what information else? man that you're putting out there so it's not me it, it's all of you you guys have the great information i just facilitate it it's it's the biggest ruse that's ever been pulled you guys think i'm the <laughs> genius i i get the geniuses on the show right. <laughs> so um thank i thank you so much i appreciate all three of you coming on i want you each to get a chance to plug whatever it is so go ahead plug your company again if there's um Anything you want to give us, anybody you want to give a shout out to or something specific that you, you, you want to plug, go ahead and, and feel free. And we'll start with John. We'll go to Daniel and then off to Mike. You know, again, John Fowler, John Fowler Designs, I'm at Fleming Island, Florida, just south of Jacksonville. Uh, you know, just really excited to see that you know, there's some kind of awakening going on in the industry that, you know, people are starting to realize that, you know, the, for years to, you know, uh, craftsmanship has kind of gone down in a lot of ways. It, you know, we need to take advantage of um, social media and some other outlets to to get the word out that you know we need to start getting these younger people excited. And um, you know, and certifications. Like I didn't even really know all about all these certifications and stuff that we're going on because nobody ever really talks about it around here. So I'm going to start looking into some of these classes and certifications. And you know, it's it's getting the word out. And I think that's the biggest issue that we have is uh you know letting other people know what's going on and uh what's out there for us i had no idea there was a a competition or all these certifications and and now i do so Mm -hmm. now my my apprentice and and actually i do call him apprentice i've done that from day one Uh, that's when i hired him i told him i wanted an apprentice and not a helper and so i was very specific about that and i think that if we really take the time to respect the guys that come and work for us that you know, it does change the, you know, the way they look at it for their future. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm Daniel Gonzalez, Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, Preferred Flooring. You can visit our website, preferredflooringmi.com. Visit us on Facebook. Um, I'm with John, man. We're craftsmen. We got to keep on pushing. I've uh, been on jobs before where they come in and say, I can't believe you did something like this you're they they call me an artist um and you know it is man it's a it's an art and i'm i'm trying to bring it back 
there's not a lot of resilient guys left out there. Like I say, it's a dying art. So if I can help facilitate to bring that back, that's what I want to do. So you can, that's probably too late to sign up for next week's uh, certification with the NAFCT we're holding over at Artex in Pennsylvania. But, you know, talk to Sonny and Paul and they'll tell you what's going on with the ones that they got coming up. Yeah, uh, Mike Atkins, Atkins Flooring on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Uh, yeah, I just look forward to, you know, getting more educated. Uh, you guys can check me out on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. Um, yeah, same thing. Look forward to doing more certifications, you know, watching what happens on Facebook. I like the uh, FIOA. I'll shout them out. Um it's cool just catching up with everybody and seeing how many, you know, how passionate people are about flooring. Um, especially like recently, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like reflamed man or something. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, cool. it's pretty cool to watch, you know, there's Being in it for so long and then seeing such a decline in flooring, you know, I guess it, the recession and all that and then seeing it come back and come back in a positive way. That's pretty cool. You know? I, I would not disagree. Um, I, I happen to start flooring at a very interesting time. And what I've been able to see is that there is an emergence of the next generation of leaders coming out. And you, you're starting to see who's going to be on the leading edge of taking this industry places. And so it, it, the next few years are going to be very interesting to see where we go and, and how we get there and who's pushing what agenda. And I, I think this, this educational agenda is got to be at the, at the top. If we're yeah. not staying educated and on top of our games, then it doesn't matter what else you're doing in my opinion. Yeah. Things are definitely happening <laughs> for sure. So cool, now, now is everyone going to surfaces again next year? Uh, oh Yeah. I'm definitely going to try to. I, I can't say 100%, but I'd like to go back, yeah, just to check I'd it like out. To, if we get a chance to, I'd like to go, yeah. Yeah, I want to go check out all the booths, man. We really yeah. missed out on some stuff. It'd be cool seeing all you guys again. I mean, you know. <laughs> I know Kyle a, can buy us all beers. We're up, yeah, we all oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Definitely, I can afford that. I feel Let like me tell I you. got to hang out none when I was there. I just, uh, you know, kind of focused on that competition and, so and you're, cool to, yeah, to and you're there with a different agenda. So I totally get it. You know, you guys yeah. are there to compete. You need to focus on being able to compete at the top of your game. That's why you're there. You can't go and, and phone it in and stay out till four in the morning, having beers with everybody and then show up with four hours of sleep and try and get it done. That's just, it's not a good look for us and it's not going to be, you, you're not going to put out your best work. So I totally get man, it. I you was, know, I was tired at seven o'clock in Vegas, man. Cause it's three <laughs> hours time difference. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, all right, gentlemen, I'm sure I will talk to you all again. And once I appreciate having you on, taking your time to get together with me once again, thank you for getting together on such a short notice for me. And I look forward to seeing what you all continue to produce. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, thanks for thanks having for us, the man. invite. And it was good seeing you guys again. See ya. Yeah, same you guys, man. Good night. Good night. Later. That's all the time we have for this week. To keep the conversation going, head on over to the Floor Education Facebook group. Be sure to subscribe so you can hear each and every episode. We can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and most major podcast directories. Don't forget to leave a review and let us know what you think about the show. If you'd like to be a guest, have questions or feedback, you can email us at flooreducation at gmail.com. You can help support the show by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash flooreducation. Remember, your education never stops.